What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question one in the seventh grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that the question is just asking us to say which expression has the least value when x equals 100. So we're going to have to plug 100 into each of these and see which expression gives us the least value as a result. So in order to do a question like this and do it really well, you'll need to know how to evaluate expressions, how to plug in a number for a variable, and also how to compare numbers and find which one is going to be smallest. So the word least is the most important word here, because the word least, you can think of it in terms of money. If each of these expressions represent how much money someone has, who has the least money? Next thing that's very important is this x equals 100. That means that if I want to test out, for instance, choice A, that's going to become 1 over 100. Choice B will become 10 over 100. Choice C will become 1 minus 100. Choice D will become 10 minus 100. So let's go ahead and figure each of these out. Uh, to start with the fractions, 1 out of 100, we can also say is 1 one hundredth, which if you remember your work with fractions and decimals, you probably learned that we can say 1 one hundredth to represent this fraction, but also to represent this decimal. Some other people may know it as 0 0.01. Now, we don't have a calculator to do this question with, as I can see, but, um, but this is probably the easiest way just to go from 1 one hundredth as a fraction to 1 one hundredth as a decimal. Um, there are going to be a lot of questions that make you go back and forth in this skill. Choice B is another example of this. 10 over 100 is the same as 0.10, also known, I don't need the zero on the end, so we can call this 0.1 or 1 tenth. Now for 1 minus 100, this is when we get into our rules about subtracting integers. Because I can think of this, um, in addition to just 1 minus 100, I can think of it as 1 plus negative 100. And now that I'm adding a positive number and a negative number, my rules change a little bit because I have to figure out... First, I have to figure out what 100 minus 1 is, and that's 99. Next, I have to look at my bigger absolute value, so the, the number that is um, bigger just in terms of itself without looking at its sign, positive or negative, that's 100. Since 100 has my negative sign, I need to go ahead and make that negative 99. So that's like if I had a dollar and then I spent $100. I would have to borrow $99 from somewhere, like my bank account or a friend or something like that. In a similar way, if I look at 10 minus 100, I'm going to start by saying, okay, that's the same thing as 100 minus 10, and I just look for my negative sign. Actually, let me go ahead and make that plus negative 100. Whoops. Should have done that first. It's always good to do that first because you never want to subtract when you deal with integers. You always want to add. All right, so now 100 minus 10 is 90. I look for my larger absolute value. My larger absolute value is 100. 100 is attached to a negative sign. So this is negative 90. All right, so now let's compare each of these amounts and see who would have the least money if these were dollar amounts. This person would have one penny. This person would have 10 cents. This person would owe somebody $99, and this person would owe somebody $90. Now, if we think about the person who has the least money, this person has the least money, because if we think of this negative sign as money they owe, they're going to have to make the most money in order to pay back somebody, so we consider that to be the least money that they have right now, and that gives us choice C as an answer. 